morning. Welcome to this week's video. Um, this week I've come back to a location I've been to a couple of times. Um, but where I'm heading this morning is, is, is a new area. Um, what it is, I've come back up onto the, uh, the Brendan Hills, just on the edge of Exmoor. Um, walking down old, the old mineral line again, where I know there are some nice waterfalls. Um, particularly when we've had um, heavy rainfall, which uh, let's face it, that's all we've been getting is rain. So I know there's a couple of waterfalls down here that are going to be uh, quite nice. Um, also, there's a waterfall that I haven't been to, that, um, or it's showing on the map. So I'm going to head out and see if I can find that one. So, okay, that's a uh, walk on and see if we can find it. Although this is really only a good location after heavy rain, there's another reason why I don't come here very often, because this walk down to it is called the incline for a reason. Um, it is a steep, steep drop, um, which is fine going down. But if you've seen my previous videos from here, you'll know it's an absolute killer going back up. But I've um, got to push the limits to uh, get the shots, as they say. <laughs> just realized I've made an absolute rookie mistake and there's no way I'm going back not at that incline but I've left my tripod in the van um I have got my little gorilla one that I use for the gorilla pod that I use uh, for the Osmo here now and again. So I'm going to have to make do with that. Or handheld, which is going to cut out the slow exposures. Oh, I'm annoyed with myself. Anyway, I can't do anything about it. Let's push on. Here we are, one waterfall. Um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely bigger than the others up there. Um, a bit awkward, I'm not sure. Compositional wise, find something I'm sure. Would have been a lot easier if I had my tripod, admittedly, but anyway, I haven't, so I've got to deal with it. Right. Let's see, uh, see what we can find. So, here we are. Gorilla pod in use. Composition there. Waterfall in the background. What I've done, got this bit of a foreground here, this running up through and then up over the waterfall. Um, as always with the waterfalls, exposing for this really white water because it'll blow out, um, which is obviously underexposing all the surrounding area. So I think I can get away with a single shot because I think I'll be able to pull pull those shadows back out in post. Um, but just in case, I am also taking another another shot at a. Uh, 
higher exposure to expose for this sort of surrounding and surrounding area down here. Um, the main shot, main shot for the waterfall at the moment is F11 at a quarter of a second. Um, and then for the, for the rest of it, I'm actually slowing it down even more. Um, just to just to bring this all out but by slowing it down that is then obviously creating more movement in that water but increasing the exposure on that so um, I've got the ISO at 64 so that's down nice and low okay right first shot done let's uh, see what else we can find Another thing with forgetting the tripod, uh, it acts as an aid when you're clambering down into like awkward places, you can use it as a steadying stick. But anyway, I've clambered down into this bit of a bit of a valley, a uh, bit of a ravine here where the stream runs down through. But actually, the uh, gorilla pod is working out nice in this situation because I'm getting the camera down nice and low to the water. Um, lower than I could with my um, with my other bigger tripod and getting a nice shot up through here let me just uh, turn you around let you have a look okay that's the uh, view looking up through there and we've got this sort of stream running up through a little sort of bit of a full cascade there we've got these trees overhanging here and then the waterfall in the background. Uh, shooting at ISO 64. Uh, one's uh, on the waterfall itself. I'm shooting at yeah, a quarter of a second again at F13. And then I am doing one at um, F11, half a second as well for the surrounding areas, just to pick out hopefully a bit of light, a bit of detail that I can bring in. Okay, right, let's have another look. Okay, I think I'm done here for now. Um, I'm going to make my way back up to the other waterfalls. And yeah, quite a decent flow, which is what I was expecting. Looking at the way the grass has been flattened either side of there, I would imagine the last few days when we've had the real heavy rain, it's probably been coming out over there quite, quite more, quite a bit more dramatically. Um, but anyway we found the hidden waterfall that uh, has been eluding me for a while. Okay, I'd say hidden waterfall. In fairness, it's, it's not that hard to find. Um, albeit, is it worth the trek down here? Because it's, it's quite an easy walk down, but the walk back up is not going to be great. Um, I know there's two or three waterfalls back further up that I'm gonna go and take a look at as well on the way back up through. Um, but anyway, let's start this climb back up and uh, find these other, have a look at the other waterfalls and see if we can get some different compositions than what I've got before. Bear it in mind, I'm using the Gorilla tripod instead of my normal tripod, but here we go. Okay, so that's the first part of the climb done. Got me back up 
to uh, these waterfalls that I've found before. Um, just getting a composition here. Uh, I'll just turn you around, show you, show you what I'm doing. Okay, so there we are. This uh, first waterfall here. I'm using this branch here, this mossy branch with a couple of ferns on it as a foreground, and then that cascade behind. Usual scenario, a couple of different exposures just to make sure we've got plenty of dynamic range and not blowing out those whites but uh, but yeah it's not looking too bad I quite like this top four the way that it zigzags it comes off the top there and it zigzags down through and it's uh, it's quite nice Okay, actually, forgetting my uh, tripod might work out in my favour because using this gorilla pod, I'm getting down in some quite intimate locations. Uh, look at this one. So I'm shooting right down low there, as you can see, using this fall here, which is only actually about, I don't know. 12, 12 inches high, about a foot high here, but then behind, you've got that main fall coming down in the background, and in the camera, it's looking rather nice. Take it down so you can see. So, yeah, so there, we've got the main fall just the top of it at the, at the very top of the frame there. Um, yeah, it looks quite nice. Okay, let's see if we can find some more. So I'm just getting some sort of moving around just trying to use this uh, mossy old tree here just trying to use it as a bit of a foreground for uh, for the waterfall there behind and I've got a couple of shots um, difficult to get in a decent position here but just sort of clambering around and doing the best so I think I've got a couple of shots Fenling's any good. I'll uh, pull it up, let you have a look. Okay, so just uh, going over something that I've, I've gone over many a time before regarding waterfall photography is this white water here you obviously want well depending on what you want I like personally a slower exposure to give some movement in the water some people like a faster shutter speed to freeze that motion but um, personally I like a bit of flow to show a bit of movement in the water your main problem is this white water if you expose to your surroundings that there is going to be blown out and blown out information you're never going to recover um, it's better to underexpose and bring the shadows up in post to uh, to get that detail so expose for the whites in that water make sure you don't overexpose that um, because else you'll never get that information back the surrounding areas you can always pull the shadows out um, 
using whatever your choice of software is. I use uh, Lightroom and, and Photoshop, but whatever your choice of software is, you can pull those shadows out um, and keep the shadows down in here, keep, keep the exposure down in this water. Or alternatively, what I tend to do is take a couple of exposures, one for the water and one for your surroundings. And then you can just blend them in Photoshop um, and get the best out of the scene. Um, I have done some videos in the past regarding photo blending and an exposure blending. So uh, I'll put a link at the top uh, for you to have a look at that if you want to. So I'm just making my way down. This is the uh, lower of the, this sort of couple of falls here. Um, just making myself way down. I'm, this is the one I normally struggle to get composition on. Um, because of all these trees, these fallen trees behind me. They tend to sort of block, block the view a little bit. Um, but the part I've got this, uh, we're in a pod. Uh, I can sort of maybe cling to a branch somewhere. I'm uh, hoping I may be able to get something a little bit different. But uh, we'll see. Right, let's have a look. So, this is uh, interesting here. I've got the... <laughs> got everything just wrapped around. this stuff just hanging off the end of this. Looking up through... Looking up through this branch here got these branches coming in from the side um, just and the waterfall there is just in that in that gap there just looking through um, yeah it looks <laughs> it looks quite interesting um, because this branch here I just took you down is that this branch here and here is literally inches from the lens um i am shooting at f18 which is closed down a little bit more than i would have wanted um but i need that and it's giving me half a second and then i've taken several several focuses so i've done a focus on this branch here a focus midway down through this leading branch a focus back in there and obviously a focus back on the waterfall um few focuses a couple of different exposures um, may finish up as a two or three shots blended um, not sure I may I may actually leave it with this foreground foreground sharp and then and then sort of blending off in the distance to a bit bit of blur in the background because it that will then give it a little bit of depth as well so I'm not sure um, the secret is take as many different options as you can at least then when you get back when you get them on your computer and you start um, doing your post processing you can see and you can blend in or use different parts of the uh, of the image as best that you you see it okay right let's get some more have just well basically worked my way where am I worked my way down around around the back of there up underneath basically taking all sorts of different compositions different angles um, but this last one I actually really uh, quite like let me just let me bring the bring the image up on the camera for you to see there looking down into the hole of the base of the bottom of the waterfall you see the top we've got those um, 
those branches there just catching the light so we've got the water coming in bit of a bit of a circle in this pool down here yeah quite like the look of that one okay right I think we are just about done here for today Okay, so what turned out, what I um, expected to be a bit of a disaster for getting my tripod, actually turned out quite good. Um, luckily I had the, uh, the small one that I use for the Osmo now and again on me, but uh, if I didn't have that, it might have been a different story. But um, this morning provided some nice shots, found the waterfall that I've been meaning to get to for some time and also checked out and got some new compositions on some falls that I knew. So um, I'm going to make my way back up the steep climb now, back to the van and um, make my way home. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's video. Um, if you have, please hit that subscription button and the notification bell to keep up with the latest content. And give the video a thumbs up that would be much appreciated because it just helps with the video algorithms as does leaving a comment so please drop me a comment down below um, and thanks for supporting the channel so from the top of Brendan Hill on the edge of Exmoor on the incline until next time take it easy okay just as an out note word of advice instead of going straight up the incline this time I followed the bridle way which is a little bit further not a massive amount and it brings you back up onto the top road without it's still a climb but nowhere near as bad as going up the incline so for the easier trek back to the back to the road take the bridle way